This is one of the smallest gaming PCs that you can put together right now, only coming in at one liter, and usually you'd run something like Windows 11 on this machine. But in this video, we're actually going to be running official SteamOS on this tiny gaming PC. From the exterior, it might not look like much, but this is actually packing a pretty powerful CPU given its size, and we've got a dedicated Radeon GPU installed in this PC. What we've got here is the Lenovo ThinkCenter M90Q Gen 3. I picked this up about four months ago and I've made one video. We actually installed an RTX 3050 in this thing. The Yeston single slot low profile. We ran Windows 11 and for what we had, performance was great. Six gigs of VRAM and you know, given the size constraints, not a bad little card choice, but when it comes to Steam OS, I needed a Radeon card to get all of the bells and whistles that we have over on the Steam Deck. So for this, I opted to use a low profile single slot RX 6400. Now the main thing that's gonna hold this card back is the fact that it only has four gigs of VRAM. I really do wish they would have released a version with six gigs, but unfortunately we've only got four gigs and the way you get this in here is with this little PCIe adapter. It's proprietary for these Lenovo PCs, and from the Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3, they're actually all different. I'll leave links in the description to the exact one that I'm using here. And with these Gen 3 variants from Lenovo, this slot can actually run at X8 4.0, so we can get full speed out of this RX 6400. Moving around back, dual channel DDR5 RAM. I've got a one terabyte drive installed. And in order to get SteamOS on this, all I did was use the Steam Deck recovery image. I've had really good luck with it. There's been a few systems that I just couldn't get it to install on, like newer systems with something like the HX370. But for the most part, older systems have been working great. Now I do want to mention that I did have issues with the RX 6400 at first with this PC. I had to update the BIOS and the firmware through Windows in order to get it to be detected properly. So definitely keep that in mind. And there's one last thing that I needed to add to this system, and that's just a higher wattage power supply. These things usually come with either a 65 watt up to a 90, but what I've got here is a 230 watt, and we've got that Lenovo proprietary connector. This is just a gaming laptop charger I got on eBay. So going into this, I really wasn't sure what to expect with the RX 6400 and official Steam. And uh, real quick, let me show you that. Just to get it out of the way from settings, we'll go to system, SteamOS Hollow, 3.624. I didn't even have to go up to 3.8 with this system. And for the most part, 1080p performance on this card is really great, but there are a couple games that fall right on their face. Spider-Man 2 is one of those. It's basically unplayable, and I'll show you in just a bit. Not exactly sure if it has to do with the game itself or just the fact that we are running out of VRAM with that, even at low 720p but uh, performance is not great. But for the most part, everything else that I've tested here does work way better than I thought it would. We'll open this up and uh, from our performance, we've got our overlay, we can bring this all the way up. And if you take a look in the left-hand side, you can see that we've got the wattage for the GPU, but CPU wattage isn't listed with this Lenovo for some odd reason. And going down, I'm connected to a 120 hertz monitor. We can disable that frame limit if we want to, enable VRR, HDR, as long as your display supports it, half rate shading, and when it comes to TDP limit, we can go up to 43 watts with the system like it sits inside of SteamOS right now. That's with no third party applications. Uh, this is just here in Steam, like you would adjust the Steam DAG, but manual GPU clock is unavailable with the RX 6400, and I kind of expected it would be. And 43 watts might not sound like a lot, but you got to keep in mind that we've got that T variant, so it is a lower wattage chip. We've still got six cores, 12 threads, and a pretty decent boost clock here. And I have not seen it hit 4.6 gigahertz yet while gaming. So uh, I don't know if it's just being limited here by the TDP or what's going on. But so far, not too bad. And uh, now I want to get into some gaming. We're going to start out here with, let's start with Elden Ring. Go ahead and launch it. I will move back over to my game capture so we can get a closer look at everything in just a bit, but this is Elden Ring at 1080 medium settings. I did go up to high and we dropped down into the low 50s with it. So at medium 1080 on this system, it's actually working really well. We've got that Intel i5-12500T, so we've got six cores, 12 threads, and I think boost is all the way up to 4.6 but I've been keeping an eye out with the overlay and I really haven't seen it hit 4.6, up to 4.3 every once in a while. 
Next up, Borderlands 3 1080 Low, but we are at 100% resolution scale. And going to medium, it is possible, but there's some areas here when there's a lot of effects on screen where it does dip under 60. So at low, it still looks good like this at 1080 with no scaling, so 100% resolution scale. And we're seeing an average in the mid 70s with it, even during battle, which is pretty impressive here for that RX 6400. Next game we have here is Spider-Man 2, and like I mentioned, this is not performing well at all, but I don't think it's all due to the GPU running out of memory. It definitely has something to do with it, but I think it's more of the game itself right now. I did run into this issue in Linux with Spider-Man Miles Morales, but it wasn't this extreme. Right now, we're at 720p, lowest settings, and I'm using frame gen. With frame gen off, it drops down to around 10 FPS. If you take a look at our VRAM usage, we're not quite maxed out. I mean, we're really close, but that's kind of what leads me to believe that something else is going on here with this game. Wow. 1080p, medium settings with frame gen enabled. Without frame gen, you can get away at low settings with FSR set to performance, but it doesn't look great like that. You could also drop this down to 900p and get real close to that 60, but frame gen is really where it's at if you want to go up to those medium settings on this RX 6400. The next one on the list is The Witcher 3 1080p medium with FSR set to quality. We're not using dynamic resolution and with that enabled, I mean, we can get up to 120 with this, but it's going to take that resolution way down. Kind of wanted to get as close as I could up to that 1080 without breaking the bank on this RX 6400 and it's performing really well. I always throw Fallout 4 in just to make sure it performs good, and you can see that we do have some dips. This is kind of the Steam Deck optimized version. When we install this in Steam OS, we don't have any options for graphics or resolution. So I believe it's at 800p, and I know for a fact that in Windows on the RX 6400, this game runs great at 1080 medium settings. Doom Eternal, low, medium, mixed, 100% resolution scale. We didn't need to use dynamic resolution here. And just like The Witcher 3, if you used it, you could bring this up to 120 steadily. But again, it's going to lower that main resolution way down. I always like to throw at least one fighting game in. So we've got Street Fighter 6, 1080 medium settings. And I do believe that we could go up to high. You might see it dip down to around 59, but that's really normal with this game. Even on higher end systems, it does that. But yeah, with fighting games, you should have a pretty decent time on this system. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077, Steam Deck preset 1080p. And with that Steam Deck preset, it does take FSR 2.1 to balance. And I really thought we'd see much more out of this, you know, at that Steam Deck preset. But yeah, I mean, it does dip under that 60. So for the most part, I mean, we can't hit 60 with it like this. But if we enable some frame generation here or even take the settings down to low, we can get over 60 with it. But I wanted to keep the Steam Deck preset and see what we could do here with FSR frame gen enabled. And with it set up like this, one thing that I'm noticing here is much lower VRAM usage. I actually thought it would be more because we're caching those extra frames there to kind of load them in with uh, frame generation. But it did lower the VRAM usage and it's definitely not perfect. But we're now seeing an average of around 75 FPS with this game. 1080 Steam Deck preset with FSR frame gen enabled. I'll tell you, if there was a better performing single slot low profile Radeon card on the market that I could add to this that doesn't require extra power, I definitely would have done it. 
But in order to get this set up here, we had to use that RX 6400. Not the most powerful card on the market by far, but as you saw in SteamOS, it's not that bad for a small form factor system. To tell you the truth, I'd much rather have this set up with the RTX 3050 just because we are getting much better performance with that card in Windows. But you know, if a low profile single slot Radeon card is released that comes in at the same size, more powerful than the RX 6400, I'll pick one up and I can definitely retest this. But until then, I mean, this is basically what we've got for a one liter build. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links in the description. I got most of the stuff over on eBay. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.